Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with set theory uh, is going to, I suppose, concentrate on two important operators uh, or two important operations, uh, the union operation and the intersection operation. Uh, so what we'll first of all do is we'll just define what the union operator is, okay? Uh, the operator for union, okay, so the union, okay, the union operation let's actually give a definition okay so let's actually define what we mean by set union first of all okay so we'll just define set union uh, so we'll just say first of all maybe we're if given so we're given given two sets okay and uh, let's call them x and y okay so we've been given two sets x and y okay and uh, well then we define we define the union okay, of of x and y okay uh, it's denoted by denoted denoted by x u y okay so it's denoted by x u y uh, we define it so given two sets x and y we define the union of x and y denoted by x u y okay uh, to be uh, this set Okay, it's a new set. Okay, to be the set, x union y is equal to from a set builder notation. It's equal to the set of values. Okay, or the set of members, uh, such that x is an element of y. So x is an element of x. Okay, or x is an element of y. Okay, uh, so what we're saying is that if we have two sets x and y. The union is a new set, okay? That new set contains objects or elements, okay? And the elements that are in that set are values that are taken from X, okay? Or values that are taken from Y. And also by the by the or we also mean values that are in X and also in Y simultaneously, okay? So for example, for example, okay, uh, let let x equal the set that contains the values a, b, c, and d. Okay, so x is a set, it has cardinality four, there's four elements in it. They're symbolized by the letters a, b, c, and d. So let x be that, and let y be equal to the set that contains the values uh, c, d, e, f, and g, okay? So y is a set of cardinality one, two, three, four, five. So there's five things in here, okay? Uh, well then, the union, x union with y, okay, is, well, it's a set, okay? The only things that can be in the set are things that are in x, okay? Well, what are the things that are in x? The things that are in x are a, b, c, d. So is a in x? It is, okay? So a must be in this set. Is B and X? Yes, it is. So B must be in the set. Similarly, C must be in the set, and so should D. Okay? Uh, so it's a set that contains the values that are in X, okay? Or it contains the values that are in Y, okay? So the things that are in Y are C, D, E, F, and G. So what we do is we take all of them elements, or all the members, and we put them into this new set, okay? So X union with Y is going to contain everything that's in X. It's also going to contain everything in Y, but let's remember about the property of sets is that there's never any duplicates. So we take C, we put it in this set. Well, C is already listed, so there's no need to list it again. We take D, we put it in the set. It's already listed, we don't need to list it again. And we take E and put it in. Well, there's no E listed, so we must list it. We take F, put it in, it's not listed, and neither is G, okay? So what we now have is that X union with Y is a new set that contains all the members of both x also the members of y okay and actually it also contains the members of x that are also in that are also in y so there's sort of three things specified here everything in this new set x unit with y is everything that's in x okay it's also everything that's in y okay but because the way the or works, the or is what's known as an inclusive or, it also contains the things that are in X and also, they're also in Y. Okay, let's have a look at another n another example, okay, of union, but this time let's make our sets a little bit more complicated looking, okay? So let's say here's another union example, okay? And let's say for argument's sake, let's say that X 
is the set of values okay such that uh, the x values are are let's say they're integers okay and also these values must be greater than or equal to minus 2 and less than or equal to let's say 4 okay uh, and let's say that y y is the set that contains observations or members and uh, let's say that these x's are also integers okay so they're elements of z but let's say that these observations are greater than or equal to 6 and less than or equal to 8 okay and what we'd like to construct is we'd like to construct we would like to construct okay well we'd like to construct x union with x union with y okay uh, okay so this is what's known as set builder notation okay but what we really want to do is we want to construct a union of both sets now construct to construct a union of both sets what we need to do is we need to know what the elements look like that are in this particular set x now they're clearly defined here but it's a little bit more complicated in the sense that it's defined based on this condition here so let's actually list x in roster notation yeah so x in roster notation are the set of observations okay uh, they have to be integers and the integers need to be greater than or equal to minus 2 so that would be minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 and they need to be less than or equal to 4 so 4 is in the set X what about the set Y well the set Y is it is a set uh, the members or elements are integers okay uh, and they need to be greater than or equal to 6 so they need to start with 6 7 and they need to be less than or equal to 8 so Y actually looks something like this so X union with y okay is a new set the set contains all the members of x so we take everything out of x and we throw them into this set so we have minus two minus one zero one two three and four and we also take everything that's in y and we throw it into this set so what we end up with is six seven eight okay so we can actually see that x union with y is a set that has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten members okay is there another way we could actually write this we could write this in set builder notation okay uh, but let's think about the values that are in here okay well, all the values are integers okay they're greater than or equal to minus two okay they're less than or equal to eight and the only integer that's missing is the integer 5 okay so we can actually write this in set builder notation using a number of conditions so let's do this so we have x union with y is going to be the set of observations or members such that the members have to be integers okay and these integers need to be greater than or equal to minus 2 so minus 2 Okay. the members need to be greater than or equal to minus 2 and they need to be less than or equal to 8 okay but also another condition is that we don't put in the integer that's equal to 5 okay so we'll say that x cannot be equal to 5 okay so there's how we've written now what we've done is we've written x union y in roster notation but we've also written x union y in what's known as set builder notation okay so there's two examples of how the union operator works and uh, what about the intersection operator so let's have a look at the intersection operator let's try to define the intersection operator okay so the intersection operator so let's write that down intersection the intersection operator definition okay let's provide a definition for this particular uh, operator okay so let's just say once again if I want to find the intersection of two sets I need to have the two sets in my hand before I can actually find our intersection so what I'm going to say is given given two sets X and Y okay, okay uh, we define the intersection the intersection okay, okay of X with Y okay okay symbolized or denoted by denoted by uh, x like an n x intersected with y okay to be the set okay x 
intersections with y is a new set that contains members and the condition associated with the members is that the members must be elements of x and the members must be elements of y okay so this is our definition so what it's really saying here is this is that if you want to be part of the intersection of two sets okay well first of all you need to be given two sets first in initially if you want to form their intersection denoted by x intersection y well then to be in the set x intersected with y okay these members these x's okay have to be in the set x and they have to be in the set y so they need to meet both conditions so let's have a look at an example so here's our example okay so here's a here's a quick example so let's say x is the set that contains the values uh, 2 4 6 and 8 and let's say y is the set that contains the values let's say uh, 4 6 8 and 10 okay and if I want to find the intersection of the two sets well x intersection with y is equal to well x intersection with y is equal to a new set okay the items that are going in the set well first thing they have to be an x okay so here's all po here's some candidate objects because these are the objects that are in x or these are the members of x here so to be in this set x intersected with y you need to be at least an x and you need to be in y so there's two conditions to meet so let's take the elements of x first of all okay and let's see uh, do they meet both conditions so what about two well two is certainly an x because it's listed here okay but is two also listed in y no it's not okay you can clearly see two is not listed in y now to be a member of the intersection you need to be in both sets so two cannot be in the intersection what about four well four is certainly a member of x okay because it's listed here uh, is 4 also a member of y yes it is it's listed here so 4 is in both sets so 4 must be in the intersection okay let's take 6 what about 6 x uh, is equal to uh, 6 is certainly an x okay 6 is there okay is 6 also in y yes 6 is in y so 6 is in x and it's in y so what we know is that 6 must be in the intersection and let's take 8 here we go so 8 is certainly an x it's listed there is 8 also listed in y yes it is listed in y so 8 is also in the intersection okay now actually logically we don't need to go on we don't need to search through y to find values that are in y that are in x because if values are in y that are in x we would have found them when we were going through the x values if that makes sense okay uh, but let's actually just continue and let's just do it okay so now let's let's take the set y okay a uh, four four is in y is it also in x yes it is so four needs to be in the intersection well we've already listed it what about six six is in y so six is in y is six in x yes it is it's listed here so six should be in the intersection which it is and we found that on the first pass what about eight eight is certainly in y okay so that's con condition is met is it also in x uh, yes it is so eight needs to be in the intersection okay and what about the final value in y we have 10 10 is in y so we meet that condition but we need to also meet the condition that it needs to be a member of x is 10 a member of x no it's not okay so 10 can't be in the intersection so actually the intersection of x and y is equal to 4 6 and 8 okay let's do another example okay uh, so let's take as an example okay so let's take an example okay let's take let's say x is the set that contains the values 2 3 and 4 and let's say that y is the set that contains the values let's say 6 and 7 and what we'd like to construct okay is we'd like to construct x intersection with y okay and don't forget by the definition x intersection with y is a set it contains members or elements and the condition associated with the members is that they must be in x okay and the members must be in must be in y okay so what do these members look like well let's have a look so x intersection with y it's it's definitely a set okay the things that must be in here must be in x so the candidates are two three and four okay but are any of these candidates in y no they're not okay two is in x but two is not in y so it's not in the intersection three is in x but it's not in y so it's not in the intersection 
4 is in x, but it's not in y, so it's not in the intersection. Okay? So, so far we haven't found any elements that are in the intersection. What about y? Well, 6 is, and once again we don't need to do this because we've exhausted all, all the values in x already, but let's just do it for, for, uh, uh, just for convenience. So 6 is in y, so it meets that condition. Is 6 in x? No, it's not, so it's not in the intersection. What about y? What's when 7? Well, 7 is definitely in y, it's listed there, so 7 is in y. Is it in the intersection? No, it's not, it's not listed. So actually, when we go through the set X and the set Y, what we see is there's nothing shared. There's nothing in the intersection. So actually, X intersection with Y, it is a set, okay? But this set that we get is a set that contains no values, which is the empty set, okay? So we have the empty set here, or sometimes that's symbolized by, by a symbol that looks like this, okay? So in this situation here, the intersection of two sets ended up to be the empty set. Uh, okay guys, uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short example uh, introducing us to the two operators, the union operator and the intersection operator okay, as part of our set theory. Okay? Uh, I hope that this example was in some way intuitive and more importantly I hope that was in some way helpful. But maybe just let's just let's just reflect on this again. If you think about a set to be like a shopping bag with that magic property, okay, that there's no duplicates in it, well then the union of it is when you have two shopping bags, X and Y, okay, what you do is you create a new shopping bag and you, excuse me, and you throw the contents of X into this new shopping bag and you throw the contents of Y into the new shopping bag. This creates the union. And once again, the magic property of sets kicks in where there's no duplicates. So the union of two sets is like us creating a larger shopping bag that contains the contents of both sets. Okay? Whereas with the intersection operator, okay, the intersection operator is where we have two shopping bags with with, 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 with objects in them or members in them. We have two shopping bags, okay? The intersection is, well, the only thing that goes into the new shopping bag are things that are in both of the sets simultaneously, okay? So you can see that forward is in X and forward is in Y, so it's in this new set. Okay, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video was in some way intuitive and more importantly, I hope it was helpful. And thanks for watching.